All right, here are some of the things that I've learned from our soapbox derby car. Uh, some tips on building a car and uh, making one that is capable of winning races. So the most important thing in terms of safety that I watched at the races is your brake. So you can see on this car, we built a lever right in the center of the car. You push the lever forwards. And then underneath the car, that's a hockey puck that's been screwed on to a piece of wood and the kid just pushes down on it and the hockey puck stops the car. Um, I've seen some people do this with an old shoe too. They sort of have a two by four with an old shoe slipped onto it. But the most important thing about your brake is that be in the center of the car. Uh, there were a bunch of cars running that had the brake on the side. They put a bolt of lever to the side of the car and when the kid would pull it, it would lift up one side of the car and it would spin out. And sometimes we saw it crash into another car and actually break the guy's uh, wheel off and both cars were totaled and they had to drop out of the race. So the most important thing about the brake is to put it in the middle of the car. Um, on this car, one thing we did not do very well was leave space for extra weight. People tend to load up the car with uh, sometimes 200 pounds of weight behind the kid. There in fact there were some people building these pickup trucks last year that are, have a big flat platform and on the back of it they have a big five gallon bucket full of cement. Um, I don't believe that's particularly safe, and I didn't, didn't, uh, we didn't really put a lot of weight in the car with our kids when we were running it, just because, you know, if they roll off the course or hit a tree or something, it could kill them. But uh, in the unlimited weight to the class division, which is what we were racing in, I don't even know if they weigh the soapbox derby cars in any cities. You'd have to check with your local rules. But if you're planning to put weight on it, just leave room for the weight, and also build something in front of the weight to protect it from smashing into the kid if he crashes into something. Um, the wheels, of course, are the most important part. And in the, the Cub Scouts, you have to buy the official derby wheels, so there's not much latitude you have with that. I mean, you could, you know, machine the little, the little, uh, the edge of it to make it a little bit smoother. But uh, the, the main rule with the wheels that we've learned is don't let the kids play with the car. If, if they're not racing the car, uh, don't let them, you know, drag it around the driveway and play with it. Just keep it, keep it up on blocks, except when you're racing. And then in terms of the axle, we run bushings in our league. Uh, most other places run bearings, but the bearings are illegal because the hill is too steep, so we run a metal bushing in here that we have to have custom made. But uh, even with a bearing, if your axle is super, super smooth, then the bearing will actually slip on the axle, on the inside of the axle and uh, you'll, you'll get a little extra speed out of it. Not much, but you know, if, you're, if, you're, if your axle is so smooth that the bearing can spin on it, as well as spinning the wheel using the bearings in the bearing, then you have a little bit of an advantage that way. Uh, the other important thing is alignment. You want to make sure that the thing rolls in a perfectly straight line, because any time you get off course, uh, you're losing frictional energy and you're also making a longer distance to the finish line. So when you build it, you make sure that, that it actually goes in a straight line when the, when the steering wheel is straight. And in fact, you could even mark the spot on the steering wheel for it to be straight. So when the kid is in the uh, starting gate, he can line up the steering wheel to have the car going straight and then rock into motion and he doesn't have to do any adjusting when he's rolling down the hill. Um, also the other advice I'd have is check your local rules about the length of the car. We found that, that our car, in our league, the cars are required to be a little bit shorter than in other leagues, so sometimes people would bring in a car and they'd have to chop the front or the back up and off in order to be able to legally race it. And let's see, is there anything else that you need to know? I think that's a good start. I mean, we were running a Teflon uh, tri-flow lubricant on the bushings. And that seems to work pretty well. That seems to be what most of the guys are, are running there. Um, the weight, we got beaten by some really light cars sometimes. So I don't know that the weight is a huge factor if you've got really slippery wheels. Because we saw one of the cars that was the fastest car in the race was, uh, you know, the kid would just pick it up and spin it around and push it up the hill. So I know there was no extra sandbags or cement in it. So that's it. I hope this helps. You've got lots and lots more research to do, of course, but I just wanted to get, get you started. And the most important thing I've said is that brake thing. If you don't put the brake on the side, we've seen terrible things happen. We saw a, a car spin out, 
crash through the police barricade and run over a little old lady and break her foot because he hit the brake on the right side of the car and it, it spun on him and he had 200 pounds of weight in the car so he couldn't stop and bam it was over so uh, above all be safe make sure the seat belt that you build into your car works make sure your kids wearing a, a adequate helmet I might even go with a full face helmet uh, after seeing the things that I've seen on the hill and of course an awesome paint job helps. <laughs>